If an ellipse were dropped in a pool of water, what kind of waves would it make? The waves are the parallel curves to the ellipse. To construct curves parallel to a given curve, we move each point of the curve a fixed distance along the normal. By changing that fixed distance, we get a sequence of parallel curves, as shown here. Notice the cusps on the parallel curves. If light were emitted from the original curve, it would focus on each of those cusps. Some of these parallel curves look like ellipses, but in fact, no two non-circular ellipses can be parallel to each other. If each point on a circle is moved along its normal, a distance equal to the circle's diameter, then the new curve is the same circle. This curve has that same property. Its sequence of parallel curves returns to the original curve. It was constructed by taking half an ellipse and a parallel curve to the half ellipse. When these two pieces are joined, this self-parallel curve is the result. If light is shined on a curved mirror from a point source, it focuses on a curve called the caustic. The light source is the yellow dot, the mirror is shown in black, and the caustic is the green curve. Sometimes the reflected light rays don't focus in front of the mirror. In this case, they are extended back through the mirror and will focus on a point behind the mirror. Caustics like this can often be seen in coffee cups and swimming pools. Caustics to an ellipse are more complicated than caustics to a circle. If the light source is located in certain regions, the caustic has four separate pieces with lines extending to infinity. Other regions produce caustics with two pieces, or caustics which are connected. Extending the concept of parallel curves to two dimensions yields parallel surfaces. As before, move each point of the surface a fixed distance along its normal. Shown here are parallel surfaces to an ellipsoid with three axes of unequal lengths. They have been rescaled so that each image always fills the whole screen, and they are rotating gently. Note that the surface passes through itself and turns itself inside out during this process. As a short demonstration of the link editor, let's build the trefoil knot. We can begin by clicking out line segments with the mouse. We can start another strand, and then we can go ahead and join the two strands right here. Note that we only have one strand now, which is shown in white, and we can close off that strand. Now let's click off and flip one of the crossings so we actually have a knot. And let's redraw this using the display program. All nice and curvy. We can adjust many parameters of how the knot is drawn. Here we change some splining data. 
which can make the knot appear more rough and stick-like. Or we can make it more curved and puffy. The link display buffer now contains only our trefoil. We can add more links to the buffer by loading them from disk. Let's pick these two. Or we can enter their name using Conway's notation. Let's try the tangle 2 comma negative 2. Also, let's apply a rope texture to them. Here's the trefoil we entered. And these two are the ones we loaded from disk. And the tangle 2 comma negative 2. That's pretty swell. Isometric deformations of surfaces are deformations which bend, but do not stretch the surface. One simple example of this is rolling a flat rectangle into a cylinder. As you can see here, this can be done without stretching the surface. A second example is rolling a circle with a wedge cut out of it into a cone. A third example is that of a catenoid deforming into a helicoid. A catenary is the shape formed by a string held at both ends under the influence of gravity. A catenoid, shown on the screen, is formed by rotating a catenary about an axis. A helicoid is formed by taking all the points on a helix and connecting them across the axis with a straight line. It is an amazing fact that these two surfaces are isometric to one another. This is fairly easy to prove mathematically, but hard to believe without an animation of the process. A Mobius strip can be made up by connecting the two ends of a flat strip of paper with a half twist. However, the standard parameterization of a Mobius strip, shown on the screen, cannot be made out of a strip of paper without stretching the paper. The Mobius strip shown here, however, can be folded out of a strip of paper.
through some points inside a polygon, there are multiple lines which bisect the area of the polygon. Here we see a polygon with its bisection line rotating. The small shape in the middle of the polygon is the envelope of the bisection lines. In this magnified view, with many bisection lines shown, we can see the envelope. Watch as the line rotates around the envelope. If you watch carefully, you'll notice the line sweeps through the center region five times and the outer region three times. So the envelope is the region of points with multiple bisection lines.